Hi, hello and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here then hi, my name's Zoe, please subscribe, it means so so much to me, join my little family that we've got here on YouTube. I post all sorts of kinds of videos, I talk about true crime, I talk about makeup, I talk about lifestyle, there is so much that I post on my channel and I also post on Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays and Sundays and usually Saturdays and Sundays are true crime videos so if that's something that interests you make sure you turn that bell on as well. So today we are continuing Serial Killer Sunday, there is another edition, like I said I'm going to do this for as long as possible so if you do have any serial killer cases that you'd like to like for me to talk about then let me know down below we'll I'll happily do that. That that's fine. So yeah, just let me know down below or if you go and check out my social media. I'm really active on Twitter so I'll be able to see them there as well. So just want to give a little disclaimer before we jump right into this video. All this information I found on the internet, I put it together for educational purposes to share information on the case. I don't mean any disrespect to anybody who knows the victims or anybody who was in fact involved in the case nothing at all i don't mean any disrespect just so you know i also put a disclaimer in my link in my bio but like i said in my last video a lot of people are watching my videos now so i just want to make that clear so today we are talking about another serial killer we are talking about the riverside prostitute killer now this case there isn't a lot about it online but these are the cases that i love to research where there isn't a lot of information and you have to really go digging for the information. These are the types of cases I want to put out on my channel because they're the most frustrating type of videos especially when they're not solved and there's not a lot of information. They are just cases that I want to talk about. So we are going to jump right into this video. So William Suff was born on the 20th of August 1950 and he was born in California. He had two older brothers and that's all we really know about his childhood. We don't know very much more about him and that's what makes it a bit frustrating because I normally like to give background on everybody but there really isn't a lot of information. So we know that he attended Paris High School and he also graduated in 1968. So he was never really good at reading and writing but he excelled at music. And he was always known as a friendly nerd in school and he carried that right up until adulthood. So in 1974, William and his wife at the time, Terrell, had been charged with murdering their own daughter. They had beat their two-month-old daughter to death and this was proven even though to this day William does stand by the fact that she apparently fell out of her cot but... Medical professionals know the difference, they really do. So there wasn't enough evidence to charge his wife. They didn't think that she was, they didn't think she was a leader or the primary suspect in all this. And they let her go, they released her. But William was sentenced to 70 years in prison, but he only served 10 years of this sentence. So in 1986, a couple of years after he was released from prison, William started to work as a warehouse clerk for River County and he was kind of described as a mild-mannered loner by his co-workers. On the 30th of October 1986, Michelle Gutierrez's body was found by a traveller who was ravaging through some bins. He had been ravaging through the bins for some cans and that is when he discovered Michelle's half-naked body. She was curled up in a drainage ditch and she had also been stabbed in her chest. She also had blood smeared on her face and on her chest. She had been sexually assaulted with a sharp item and the autopsy also revealed that she had been strangled as well. So after the so after discovering Michelle's body, police didn't have any evidence, they didn't have any clue who had done this. The only motive that they had was that it was sexual. There was a sexual motive behind the murders. So on the 11th of December, Charlotte Palmer had been found near Highway 74. So coroners were unable to find out what her cause of death was because she was so severely decomposed. So fear started to grow through the town because two women had been discovered dead and 
police were no closer to finding out who this was. They knew it was someone targeting women and it was of a sexual nature. So the women really began to worry. So in early 1987, Lisa Ortega had been found brutally murdered on a dirt track near Franklin Street. So she was naked, she had been stabbed to death and the blood te the blood reports did show that she had drugs and alcohol in her system and it also showed that she had been there at least three days. She was killed three days before being discovered. So on the 2nd of May, Martha Young had been found in an alley across from Franklin Street. She was also naked and she was in the spread eagle position which I believe is just all your limbs spread out and this is sort of a, quite a sexual pose that killers will pause, pause the victims in. So the same as the previous victim, she had had drugs and an alcohol in her system and she had also been strangled. So the police had no evidence at all again and they started to call him the silent killer because they just had no evidence or clue to who this could be. They only knew that there was a sexual motive. So on the 17th of January 1989, Lisa Reels had been found on the beach at the side of Lake Illinois. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. And she was about 120 feet away from the water. So again, she was very intoxicated like the previous victims, but this time the killer had pushed her head into the sand and smothered her to death. So on the 11th of November of that very same year, Judith Lynn, or Angel as she was most known as on the streets, had been discovered. She was naked and she was bludgeoned to death and she was found right near Lake Elizno. So the autopsies revealed that Judy didn't go down without a fight. She really put up a fight against her attacker. She had defensive wounds on her arms and on her legs of showing where she tried to defend herself. So she really didn't go down without a fight. So it was starting to come clear to police that the killer was targeting prostitutes. All these women either had prostitute criminal records or they were involved in prostitution and there was also struggling drug addicts as well which again I think if you're a prostitute that's sometimes something what comes in hand and the police knew that there was a sexual motive behind the murders. So between 1990 and 1991 11 more women were found murdered in the same way as the previous woman and they was also found in the same proximity as the other women as well. So the killings became more violent and they became more sexual. He would sexually assault his victims with sharp items and he would mutate their bodies and he would leave the body parts beside his victims. So on the 9th of January 1992 Police stopped William's car for a routine check and in his car when they were searching it they found a bloody knife and they also found objects which they believed were connected to the previous murders. So they then decided to take him into the police station and he was arrested. So when he was in the police station this is where everything began to unravel for William. He told them everything about the murders. So William Snuff had raped, tortured and mutated over 12 women in this 12 year period and I say 12 because he was only ch ever charged with 12. He was never charged with the full 22 victims. I think this was due to evidence and things like that, so they only ever managed to charge him with 12. So when he was working as a warehouse store clerk, he had actually delivered furniture items to the police that was investigating his killing spree. And it was also speculated that he entered a chili competition where he'd make a meal of chili and it was speculated he used one of his victim's breasts in this meal and then he also won but that has never been proven or disproven so we do not know if that's true. 
So on the 15th of July in 1955, William was charged with 12 murders and the suspected 13th. But police believe he is responsible for at least 22 murders. So on the 17th of August 1995, the jury, after only 10 minutes of deliberation, found William guilty on 12 counts of murder and also a count of attempted murder. So he was sentenced to death in prison and he still waits to this day on death row to be killed. And he has tried numerous amounts of times to appeal this. Every time that his date is coming close, every time he finds out about his date, he is constantly appealing it to delay his execution. And this whole case has totally bewildered me because like I talked about in the beginning of the video, he was sent to jail for 70 years for killing his own daughter and there was proof that that's what he did. Medical professionals wouldn't confuse a child falling over with a child being beaten. I, I'm pretty sure they know the difference and I would trust a medical professional on that, on that assumption. I would not disbelieve them because I guarantee when something goes through court like that it's checked more than once. So why was he ever let out? Why was he given the chance to kill all these women? Because if he actually did his sentence, he would have never have killed any of these women. He would have never been known as a silent killer or the Riverside prostitute killer. He would None of these women would have lost their lives. It doesn't matter if they're drug users or drug addicts or prostitutes. They don't deserve to die. Some of these people had children at home. Some of these people were doing prostitution for their children because back then times were hard as they are now, times are still hard, so they did not deserve to die, and this guy truly deserves to die for what he has done. He has killed his own daughter, which he got let out of prison 60 years early for, and then he has continued to kill 22 women. This guy was clearly a, a danger to anybody so why he was let out in the first place i have no idea and i think that is a really stupid decision by the police and the pro boards and things like that and i'm pretty sure they're aware of it now but it shouldn't take him killing 22 women to prove that but the justice system these days is a totally another video i have my own opinions on that i totally disagree with it sometimes and there is certain reasons why I do disagree with it which I can go into in another video if you want to me to talk about my opinion then let me know down below I will do that I will get that video up there I just want to say as well I'm not too sure if anyone's still watching a lot of people have been asking me to do clothing haul so I have got one coming up I'm going to be doing a wish clothing haul but you know how long it takes for wish to get the clothes to you so we'll see if they even arrive first but that is coming up on my channel I do intend to do clothing hauls as well so that is today's serial killer Sunday I'm sorry it's not a real long case but that's because there isn't a lot of information around the case and I've literally been researching this so much to find as much information as possible so if anybody knows anything else around this case please let me know down below because I always like to find out more information and I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a massive thumbs up please subscribe and don't forget check out my social medias as well i'm constantly posting on there and i shall see you tomorrow for a new video bye